From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ben Gartley, Johnny. Amercon Northern Trust. Oh, hiya, Ben. What do you hear from Wall Street? You save your money. What money? The money I'm going to pay you for this case. I've got a crazy one, Johnny. So naturally you thought of me. <laughs> Nothing personal. Look, it's a, it's a trust setup. Cumulative endowment insurance rider. Big deal. Over a quarter million bucks, maybe half a million. From whom to whom? From a Mrs. Ezra Gramley widow to her granddaughter, Susan. So? And Mrs. Gramley owns the Flint Rock Ranch in Nevada. Never heard of it. Our representative out there is Jonas Parks. He's the president of the Flint Rock First National Bank. Never heard of it. <laughs> it's a whistle stop about 20 miles from Las Vegas. That I've heard of. Parks started the deal rolling, and then he got cold feet, and now he's yelling for help. Thinks the old lady may be crazy. I mean, literally. And there does seem to be a reasonable doubt. Unless Parks himself is crazy. That's also a possibility, Johnny. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Amercon, Northern Trust Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the matter of reasonable doubt. <laughs> Item one, $154.40, transportation and incidentals, Hartford to Las Vegas, Nevada. Where I checked into a hotel and then phoned the local office of a national business and credit rating bureau that my client retained on a permanent consulting basis. I asked for a rundown of Jonas Parks and got it. An A-1 set of references. Parks had been a resident of Nevada for 32 years and president of the Flint Rock Bank for 17. He was regarded locally as a cautious investor, a prudent financial advisor, scrupulously honest, and as sound as a dollar. A silver dollar. Crazy? <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> Item 2, $32.50. Deposit and first day's rental on a drive-it-yourself hired car. Mileage, Las Vegas to Flint Rock, 23.6. Itemized building appraisal, Flint Rock. Three bar casinos, all needing paint. One restaurant, one general store, barber shop, garage, welding shop, railroad depot, also needing paint. Four dwellings, and of course, one bank. Jonas Parks, president. Uh, what can I do for you, young fellow? Well, my name is Dollar, Mr. Parks, Johnny Dollar. I'm a special investigator for Amercon, and I'm here in regard to the Gramley Trust case. Oh, yes. Well, I'm mighty glad to know you, Mr. Dollar. And I don't mind telling you I'm glad you got here. Oh? Here, pull up the chair. Okay, thanks. Sit down. It's been a real odd day. Funny-looking clouds hanging off there toward the river. Yeah, I noticed them driving out from town. Storm clouds, that's what they are. This time of year? Son, in this neck of the woods, it can happen any time of the year. Cloud bursts come up just like that, and they're over just as fast. Uh huh, that's very interesting. You're a hypocrite, young fellow. What makes you think so? You didn't come clear across the country to hear a dissertation on desert storms, so stop sitting there trying to pretend you're interested. <laughs> Whatever you say, Mr. Parks. Matter of fact, you weren't even half listening to me. No, as a matter of fact, I wasn't. Well, what were you doing then? Looking you over, sizing you up. Come to any conclusions? A couple. Such as? Well, in the first place, I'm inclined to discard the theory that you're crazy. That what they told you in Hartford? Well, they figure one of you is, either you or Mrs. Gramley. They do, eh? And what is your second conclusion? <laughs> that you were sitting there sizing me up. You're right. I was. Come to any conclusions, Mr. Parks? Yeah. One? Such as? That we'll probably get along together all right, you and me. Good, good. And suppose we right. get down... The Gramley case. Well, no wonder they thought what they did. Maybe they're right. Maybe we are crazy, both of us. Well, as I understand it, Mrs. Gramley wanted to set up some kind of insured trust for her granddaughter. You started the proceedings for her and then stopped cold and called for help. Yes, it's about what happened. Well, why? Was she financially unable to carry out the hey, deal? Of course she's able. I wouldn't need any outside help if that was the problem. She's been banking with me for mighty near 20 years. Then is she mentally incompetent? Sarah Gramley is as sane as his... Well, uh, at least I've always figured she was. But confound it, Mr. Dollar, there's something wrong out at that ranch. Oh, what do you mean? I don't know what I mean. 
Well, if you don't... I mean, it's mostly things you can't put your finger on. Little things that add up, finally. Add up to what? I don't know. It's just a feeling, a kind of a... A hunch? Is that what you mean? Yes, if you want to put it that way. So I brought you clear out here from Hartford on a hunch. Go ahead, say it. Relax, Mr. Parks, relax. I've had hunches of my own. And sometimes a horse is one. But I don't even know why I think something is wrong. All right, what's the setup out there at the ranch? What's the background? Mrs. Gramley is a widow. Her husband died about 14 years ago, and she stayed on afterward and ran the ranch. Of course, her son Ed and his wife were there with her until three years ago and done most of the work. And they moved out three years ago? No, they were killed in an automobile accident. This girl, Susan, that Mrs. Gramley wanted to set up the trust for, is their daughter. She's going on 17 now. Then the two of them live there alone. No, no, there's another couple. Walter Gramley and his wife, Hilda. Walter's Mrs. Gramley's nephew. Sort of manages the ranch. Does a pretty good job of it, too. Mm -hmm. Then that's the whole family. Mrs. Gramley, her nephew Walter and his wife, and her granddaughter Susan. That's the family. For better or worse. Uh, Mr. Parks, do you even have any idea as to what might be wrong? Not the slightest. You're on your own, son. Well, how did this trust business start? How did it come about? Miss Gramley came into town one day about two months ago and sprung it on me out of a blue sky. First time she'd been in town in nearly a year. Did she say why she wanted to set up the trust? No. She said it was nobody's business but her own. She's changed a lot in the last year. She's not herself anymore. And the trust was intended in its entirety for her granddaughter, Susan. That's right. Within the next three years, she wanted the whole estate transferred to the girl. Did Susan know about it? According to Mrs. Gramley, nobody knew about it, and she didn't want anybody to know. All right, then. You started the ball rolling, and then you stopped it. Her nephew, Walter, came in to see me last week. He knew something was up, and there was no use trying to lie to him. When I told him what she was doing, he said that she would never go through with it. So? Oh, I went out to the ranch to see her, laid all the cards on the table. I told her what Walter said. Oh, what was her reaction? She said maybe he was right. Maybe she wouldn't go through with it. Then she started rambling, not even making sense, talking about the auto accident and her son's death. But before I left, she told me again that I should keep pushing the trust, get it set up. So you call for help? I called for help. Well, I guess I'd better go talk to the lady. That's not going to be so easy. Why not? Walter won't let a stranger on the place. You mean he's holding her captive? No. No, I think he believes she's losing her mind and he's trying to keep it quiet. Now, what do you believe, Mr. Parks? I don't know. Well, maybe we can find out. I hope so. Just one thing, though. Be careful. Of what? I don't know. Jonas Parks had one other suggestion. That I pretend to be a special investigator for the Cattlemen's Association. I agreed to try it. Four miles from Flint Rock, the narrow ranch road left the plateau and began climbing up through the broken bluff country. A mile and a half from the ranch house, I pulled out the choke, flooded the engine, and let the car cough to a stop, the old out-of-gas gimmick. And about ten minutes later, I was wishing I thought of some other plan. When Park said cloudburst, he wasn't exaggerating. The rain came down in sheets. In 60 seconds, I was soaked through. And in another two minutes, the dry ground was a muddy bog. I kept on walking, or trying to walk, and the footing got worse. By then, I'd had it, or at least I thought I had. I hit the mud, rolled into a pile of boulders, and pulled my gun. A man was riding slowly toward me on a horse, holding a rifle over his arm. I edged down between the rocks, took a sight on him, and waited. Oh, there. Oh. He dismounted and walked toward me, carrying the rifle carelessly. Apparently, he thought he'd drop me. I let him get within 12 feet. All right, hold it. Drop that rifle. Get your hands up. I said drop it. What's the idea? Well, that's a good question. Only I'm the one to ask it. The trespassing. We've been losing cattle. So I've heard. You... What do you mean, you've heard? I'm an investigator for the Cattlemen's Association. Are you Walter Grimley? Yeah, that's right. What do you expect to find sneaking in here on foot this way? Not what I did find, at least. Look, I've got a car back there on the road. I ran out of gas. I understand the owner of the Flint Rock is a Mrs. Ezra Gramley. Yeah, she's my aunt. Well, I'd like to see her. I'm afraid that's impossible. Why? What's your name? Dollar, Johnny Dollar. 
Mr. Dollar, go back to your car and wait. I'll send some gasoline from the house. Huh? When you get it, turn that car around and get off the property. You're working for me, you know. I'm a member of the association. And you know as well as I do that you've got no more authority than any other private individual. So get out and stay out. And if I don't? Well, then you're a trespasser. And I won't miss twice. The next time I'll kill you. Is that clear? It was clear. Perfectly clear. And at this point, I wasn't ready to force the issue. So I conducted an orderly strategic withdrawal. In short, I went back to the car. The rain stopped before I reached it. And a few minutes later, a station wagon came lumbering down the road from the ranch and braked to a stop a few yards away. The girl who came toward me carrying a five-gallon gasoline can was a living little doll, a daffodil, as perky and bright as a brand-new penny. Hello there. Hi. I'm Susan Gramley, and you're Mr. Dollar, and you're out of gas, and I've got some for you. Well, here, that's pretty heavy. Let me take that. No, just stand back and avoid the splash. I'm an old hand at this. In fact, I'm a chronic empty tanker myself, and I... I... Uh, oh, what's the matter? Out of gas, are you? Big deal, huh? That tank is almost full. Yeah, well, there's no use lying to you, I suppose. Nope, I'm too smart. I see. Another thing... You're not with the Cattlemen's Association, Mr. Dollar. I'm not? Nope. I think you're here to dig up the past because of what has happened and what might be going to happen. All of that, huh? Yep. And you know what? I think it's just fine and dandy. You do? You bet I do. I loved my dad. I I loved him more than anything. They knew what he always did when he got mad. Sure they knew. I figured it out a long time ago. Like to tell me about it, Susan? You'll find out, Mr. Dollar. I think you're the kind of a man who smashes into things, right into the middle and breaks them wide open. Be careful, though. Oh? Because you know something? You're smashing into a bomb. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the dead past speaks in a musty morgue, or tries to. And a living lady gets cozy, or tries to, really tries to. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.